Alright guys, how are you doing tonight? It's Wednesday, November 6th, 2019. Welcome to another episode of Music of Destruction, right here on YouTube. So tonight we are having a look at the debut album from The Pissing Razors, and I know a lot of you may not have known that I do like groove metal, and this band was actually introduced to me from Gail Cartwright from Shadows of Death Records, so thank you very much for getting me into this band, Gail. I really appreciate it. So tonight, yeah, we're looking at the self-titled debut, and it was released in 1998 on Noise Records. Now, the lineup on this album consists of Eddie Garcia on drums, Matt Lynch on guitars, Rick Valles on bass, and Joe Rodriguez doing the vocal work. Now, Pissing Razors are a groove metal band from El Paso, Texas, and what's really cool is Gail actually went to school with Eddie Garcia. So how fucking cool is that? The CEO of Shadows of Death Records going to school with the drummer for the Pissing Razor. So pretty fucking awesome. I cannot wait to interview Eddie right here on Music of Destruction. It is going to be happening at some point in the near future. So I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, Gail, for putting me in touch with Eddie. Now this is actually quite cool because upon listening to this, I definitely get a lot of Pantera, Fear Factory, and some Sepultura influences going on here, which is quite awesome. Now make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the bell for all notifications. I would really appreciate it. If you would like to join the Facebook group, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash music of destruction. No spaces, pretty easy to find. If you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just search for music of destruction if you want to follow me on social media that's the place to do it if you'd like to get access to my exclusive podcasts the seed then consider becoming a patreon over on patreon uh, go to patreon.com forward slash music of destruction right now i am covering the history of pantera very excited to be bringing that one to you guys parts one and two are up there right now for you Part 3 is going to conclude the history of Pantera and that series, and I will be releasing that podcast on November 15th. So thank you very much for your continued support on the Patreon page. Alright, so the album opens up with the track Dodging Bullet Bullets. And this is a straight up groove metal song with a lot of great riffing and odd time signatures. And the bass and drums are mixed very well here. Now the production is clean, but it's not clean to the point where the music loses any of its identity. It definitely bears a lot of resemblance to Pantera with this track. Now lyrically this one is all about suicide and the thought process involved with one who would be pondering suicide. And it definitely has that raw aggression going on here with some really great groove heaviness happening and some great bass Great double bass drumming, great bass guitar, and some good vocals by Joe. Definitely has that emotional unrest feeling going on, and it's a great track here with Dodging Bullets. Next up is Tortured, and this one has some really cool, clean vocals and some more great drumming and groovy hooks all throughout the track. Great vocals and some awesome head-banging groove riffing happening and pounding drums that I really appreciate from Eddie. Now lyrically, this one is about someone who's feeling tortured inside and ebbing away, but also looking to feel some kind of triumph and a way to get through it and rise above. Next up, we have Where We Came From, and this one is actually quite short, clocking in at 2 minutes and 13 seconds, but it has some really awesome, or it has a really awesome punk-like feel to it, with some speedy drumming and great groove going on throughout the song. Now, Eddie is quite the talented drummer, I must say, and I look forward to hearing more of his work with the Pissing Razors. Now, he has some really great timing and skills that are being showcased all throughout this album, and guitars on this track are akin to groove and some post-thrashing happening, which is, a good, which is a good thing, and I'm really glad that the bass can be heard pretty clearly here as well. Definitely a very punk-like feel to this track, as it almost sounds quite upbeat at times. Now lyrically this one is all about remembering where you come from and persevering against all the odds and challenges that one faces throughout life. Pretty good song here as well. 
Now next up is the track Permanent and it opens with some great riffing which once again really reminds me of Pantera and there is a strong Pantera influence here along with some other bands. Uh, some awesome bass work carries this track along and there's some great double bass work in this one from time to time from Eddie as well. Now guitar riffs are once again very groovy but also have a bit of a thrashy feel to them at times and it serves the album quite well in my opinion. So why don't we have a listen to Permanent. And we are back. So this one is definitely a standout on the album and I enjoy it quite a bit as it has me thinking of bands like Pantera meets Skin Lab if you know who Skin Lab is. So quite a good song with this one as well and lyrically it's all about loss and hatred but it's also talking about the permanent scars that can be left behind by love and the pain of betrayal. Pretty good track here as well. Next up is Life of a Lunatic and this one opens quite frantically with some great blasting and double bass before breaking into an awesome groove section that carries it along into a clean vocal section with the bass guitar really being showcased a lot on this track. Groovy and heavy, this is one great fucking song. Vocals are awesome here as well and it breaks frantically into some really fast drumming and double bass and it gains in its intensity before coming back to the main groove lines and bass from before. Pretty gutsy move on this one as its odd time signatures can get a little bit confusing. But this one is pretty fucking killer and so far my favorite track on the album. Now lyrically this one is all about insanity and the battle of someone going through some pretty dark and twisted shit in their life. Lots of intensity on this one as it's easily the heaviest song on the album and I really dig it a lot. Great fucking track here as well. Now next up we have World of Deceit and this one opens like some later Sepultura with its really heavy pounding double bass drums and fast frantic guitar work and I can really feel the Sepultura influence on this one and it's definitely a good thing. Even the vocals remind me of some Max Cavalera and it's fucking awesome. I can even hear a little bit of Soulfly in the guitar riffing here as well. This is a killer song guys so without further ado let's check out World of Deceit. And we are back and it almost seems like this album gets better as it progresses and that's what makes it so great for a debut album. I think for 1998 this is one of those albums that really continued on that groove metal influence that it had that groove had on metal that pine that that Pantera ended up pioneering and there is so much going on on this album too and you can really hear 
the groove influence, and it's really great for a debut album. I can even hear some of Fear Factory going on here, so lots of crazy influences that are definitely something that makes the album special, as it doesn't get too formulaic or boring. However, it does drag on a little bit with 13 tracks. I feel like it could have ended with 10, but we'll get into that. Now, next up, we have the track Disaster. And I'm instantly reminded of early Fear Factory meets Pantera. So quite a good mishmash going on there. And it's quite different than the rest of the album with lots of emphasis on heavy groove going on here with Eddie's drumming carrying things very well. He knows when to implement fills and tom work when necessary and his talent is showcased brilliantly on this track as well with some awesome double bass work and an almost military style snare approach happening at times that give the song a very powerful feel and overall mood. It then breaks into some thrashier sections that keep things fresh, but the meat and potatoes of Pissing Razors is of course groove metal, and I really appreciate that aspect of their music. Great song here as well. Now next up is Desperado, which has some really wicked clean vocals that remind me of Skin Lab in a lot of ways, and definitely carries a little bit of that Skin Lab influence. Now I know a lot of people back in the day didn't really like Skin Lab, but I actually quite enjoy them. Though Pissing Razors have their own unique take on all of these influences that I mentioned, and this one almost has some fast rapping going on, which give it an almost new metal feel. And that's not a bad thing. Lots of variety happening on this, and it gets really groovy as it progresses, and has some awesome slower groovy heaviness to it that I really enjoyed a lot. Great song here as well. Now next up is Season to Die, and this one continues on in that awesome slow groove heaviness that Pissing Razors really like to work with. Eddie and company's musicianship on this record is really good. And this is an awesome effort for a debut album, as I mentioned. And this is one of those albums that I feel goes unnoticed and gets buried beneath crap like Machine Head. Go figure. And no, I'm not a Machine Head fan at all. There's almost a really cool guitar riff that soars high, or not almost, there is a really cool guitar riff that soars very high that give it almost a psychedelic feel as the riffing is quite psychedelic on this track. And it certainly has an atmosphere to it that I really appreciate. Great song here as well. I must say, however, that by now... I'm very impressed with this band and I'm not super familiar with groove metal and it's a genre that I really look forward to exploring more. Now next up we have Silent Hatred and it opens up with some great heavy groove and drumming from the legendary Eddie Garcia. Great job Eddie and company on this album, you guys are great musicians. This one is quite thrashy but also groovy as well and it's got that headbanging groove that fans of the genre are going to love. And the vocals on this one can get a little tiresome in my opinion and there's some great bass work on the track and it has enough variety to keep you listening. However, by this point, I kind of feel like the album has dragged on for a little bit too long as there's only so much you can do with groove metal and the album kind of ends up sounding like there was a little bit of filler tracks just thrown in for good measure. But in my opinion, it could have easily ended with the track Season to Die. But I digress. It could have went out on a higher note than it, than it ends up achieving. But I will say that there is some interesting, almost industrial-like elements happening towards the end of the album that do freshen things up and give it some more variety as it drags on. Um, the last two songs are For What It's Worth and Broken Trust, and they offer up some groovy heaviness and lyrical themes that talk about personal struggle and triumph and pain. And these are some pretty heavy tracks as well, but are both similar in their theme and delivery. Eddie's drumming on this album is what really makes the album stand out, and he's one of the more talented drummers out there in my opinion. And of course, I really appreciate his style and odd time signatures, which really make this album quite unique. So now we come to the final verdict for the debut album from the Pissing Razors. And I'm gonna score this a 7.5 out of 10. It is quite good for what it is. And I'm sure that a lot of people are really gonna love this album. I wanna give some shout outs to some awesome friends of mine, Gail of Shadows of Death Records. Make sure you go and check out shadowsofdeathrecords.com forward slash media. 
Also, Anna Maria, an upcoming all-female death metal act, is being signed in the Philippines. Gail's traveling out there to put on his first show with Anna Maria being the headliners and a bunch of great acts coming up. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to leave a link in the description to Anna Maria's Facebook page where you can check them out. They're a great up-and-coming all-female death metal band from the Philippines. They're getting signed December 14th, 2019 to Shadows of Death Records. So congratulations to Gail for that, putting on that show. It's going to be great. And if you're in the Philippines, make sure you check that out. It's going to be great, guys. So I also want to give a shout out to my great friend over at Metal Ben's Chronicles. Go check him out. He's a great metal YouTuber, great brother, good friend of mine, and my future podcast partner for Brothers from Hell on Podbean. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Have yourselves an awesome night. And remember, stay fucking metal. We'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, everybody.